With the rise of local gaming nights, easier access to funding sources, printing and distribution, as well as a massive resurgence in the tabletop hobby market, now is the age of the board game. No longer must we nerds hide in basements rolling odd-shaped die in the hopes of that elusive Nat 20. Now we can rise up, head to the streets and go to the basement of our local game stores instead. Shut up, it's progress. And you know what's even better? That board games and video games have now started to tie up and it's produced content more white-hot than how I describe myself on Tinder. So let's take a look at some of these hybrid beauties together today. With this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are seven awesome board games based on video games. But before we do, two things. One, I'm not including games I've not played yet because I want this to be honest recommendations. And two, did you know that WhatCulture even has its own board game? It's true, we do. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, dong. Number 7. Doom 2017 You guys remember Doom, right? Heavy metal, huge guns, demon brains splattered all across the screens? Well, it turns out that that concept is so universally appealing that it actually works in board game form as well. The Doom board game sees two to five players smash through hell itself with one of the players controlling the demons in an effort to stop them. The big thing that Doom does differently is introduce a pseudo deck building concept for you to manage your abilities and weapons. Each marine has a deck of cards determined by the weapons you choose, which can be played throughout the game with different effects allowing you to fit a combat style around your own preferred play style of hit and run or just keep hitting and then keep hitting again and then hit some more until everything's dead. If you can glory kill a demon, you get special buffs as well, which ties in directly with the game's health recovery system and ensures that play sessions will be violent in all the right ways. Plus, the figurines are detailed in ways not seen outside of your mum's list of sexual preferences. There's my one per list. Number 6. Betrayal at Boulder's Gate Yes, yes, I know this one is technically just a reskin of the original Betrayal at the House on the Haunted Hill, hence why I've put it so high up on this list. However, there is so much content on offer here and the additions made to this really make the game feel fresh enough even for seasoned Betrayal players. With your group of wizards and warriors, you need to explore and expand the beautifully drawn game map. As you do, you'll trigger more events than a Tumblr post on male rights and have to deal with all that fallout. Once the danger has reached a certain level, then one of your team reveals themselves to have aligned with evil and you need to work together to take them down. There are so many scenarios and unworldly powers to imbue both characters and betrayer that every play session feels unique. It's not too hard to pick up either with clearly explained rules, so it's a great place to start with asymmetrical board games. Plus, it's always a laugh to mess with your mates. Number 5. StarCraft the Board Game StarCraft the Board Game is one of those rare cases of a board game having loads of protoss and next to no cons. <laughs> ah, puns, I've got them. The board game maintains the theme and feel of the video game, with many of the units sharing special abilities across mediums and offers three races to choose from. And seeing as this is a game all about strategies, dice rolls have been taken out of the picture. Instead, battles are handled via cards, allowing for long-term ploys to be built as you buy better cards with the resources you have. Each race has its own distinct playstyle, with its own win conditions and starting setup technology. Each faction is also split into two colours, meaning that up to six people can play at the same time, and each manages to feel unique, but more importantly, fair. However, come at this with your reading glasses on, as it's a 45-odd page book with a steep learning curve. But then again, if you love Star Starcraft enough to buy this board game, you eat complexity for breakfast. Number 4. Dark Souls When the game box contains a massive you died insert as the first thing you see, you know instantly that the Dark Souls board game is out to get you. It is a hard game, frustratingly so when starting out, but this game does so much right that even when you get your ass handed to you, you'll be gearing up for the next attempt. This is a cooperative experience for up to four players in which they try to take on the denizens of dungeons and duff up some big dudes at the end. All beautifully framed with the Dark Souls penchant for item collection, soul gathering, and praising that f***ing sun. The bosses are what really kicks this game into the awesome category. The figurines straight up look amazing, and the bosses attack from a deck of behaviour cards which encourages the player to learn the patterns and prepare in advance for upcoming actions. It's a faithful adaptation of the game and will have you howling long into the night, either from joy or despair. Number 3. Deadly Premonition Following the same bloody trail as its video game counterpart, Deadly Premonition the board game puts two to four players in the role of detectives, attempting to unearth the killer that's hiding amongst them. You are given six characters as suspects at the start of the game. The detective's aim is to prove their character's innocence while preventing the other players from doing the same, and the killer is trying to obviously kill and falsely accuse other people to spread seeds of doubt. If the body count climbs too high before the killer is caught, the game ends with the murder of Victorious. It's a game of disruption. You're aiming to prove all your characters innocent so you can accuse the killer while also slowing down your fellow detectives. There's as much room for psychological warfare as there is tactical play of evidence and action cards. It's also lovingly tied to the game with many 
see nods and text references right down to seeing FK in the coffee. Our copy even came with the soundtrack which made for some utterly bonkers companion music. Number 2. XCOM Okay, soldiers, aliens are attacking the Earth and it's up to you and three mates to stop them. The big thing about this game is the accompanying app. One of the players has the role of central officer, who manages the app and relays details on the alien invasion to other players. It also keeps track of all your various missions, successes, and failures. Eventually, the app will trigger the final mission. You never know exactly when it's going to pop in, but just for the record, you will never be ready. Players have roles with unique skills, meaning that switching positions can create tons of unique moments. Plus, the timed element of the app is a forever encroaching terror, which makes it one of the most exciting and intense collaborative desktop games out there, and leads to a lot of panic and shouting instructions as the threat level rises. It can be extremely difficult and confusing at first, but what you get here is a deep and deeply faithful board game to a brilliant rebooted video game. And number one, This War of Mine. This War of Mine was a heart-wrenchingly realistic video game that focused in on the devastating impact war has on civilians. The board game follows the same concept as you try to shepherd your survivors through the rigors of a life in a war-torn city. It's a cooperative, survival-based game for up to one to six players, with the board game being made up of the shelter in which your characters live. The aim is to keep your spirits up, gather food and supplies, and, you know, not die. Like the video game on which it's based, the bulk of the intrigue comes from the decision-making process. Do you send more people out to scavenge for food, or do you keep them back in case your shelter is attacked? The best part of the game is the Book of Scripts, which contains over 1,000 narrative excerpts that are read when various events are triggered or when one of your characters dies. These serve to craft a greater narrative of the war-torn world around you and aid in creating a heartfelt connection with your characters, building a rich and devastating picture of their struggles, relationships, and dilemmas. As far as board games go, it's not exactly fun in the traditional sense, but without doubt, this is one of the most affecting and engaging tabletop experiences out there today. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe below, and if you're looking for more content like this, then try a few things that are floating about around my ears. It might be fun. I can't promise it though, but it might be. Bum bum bum